Hi everyone! Today we've got a Hello. special guest, Adam Hoskin. Hello. Hi Adam. Um, we thought that uh, it was a good idea to go through some of our memories from a year ago, um, as we actually realised that a year ago we went over to Finland as part of winning uh, another OnePlus related competition. Um, and Adam is going to uh, help us relive some of those details. Um, obviously, it was around the time of uh, coronavirus and the lockdown coming in. And uh, yeah. it yeah. was when we were first starting to hear of cases in like other countries, and we were like, yeah. everyone was like, oh, this will be gone in two weeks. It's fine. So, Adam, do you want to give like some background? Obviously, you entered the competition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just saw a tweet. I didn't actually see any of the teasers behind it, but OnePlus, the phone company that we worked for previously. Um, from Mount's internship, we um, I look at their forums every so often. I, saw, I noticed a post just saying, I "Want to come to Finland?" And I was like, "I've never been to a Scandinavian country. This sounds interesting." And it was to test. I mean, as far as I remember, the premise was, and this is like very strange marketing. It's almost like someone from the marketing department decided, "I want to go to Finland," because they just thought, "Right, the phone that we've got is 5G. How do we show that 5G is good?" Right, we should go to Finland install a 5G tower and make our phones control snowball shooting robots. It was so, so random. And then uh, they were basically saying to the fans, look, 12 of you, would you like to come along to Finland and try out these phone powered 5G robots in Finland? This, uh, this, was, this was very short notice, wasn't it? I mean, we, I, was, oh, yeah. I happened to be up at Megan's in Kiel yeah, at right. the time. And Adam was like, oh, I've entered this. Um, I think it was like the Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah, we're leaving on the Sunday, wasn't it? Uh, I think, no, I entered it. Well, I was at work, I'm pretty sure, when I entered it. Uh, because I was just sat there and I was like, hmm, how do I win this? And so, I mean, I think I was the first person to comment. Or like, one of the first few. Like within the top five or something like that. Yeah. So we definitely got noticed just saying, tagging us both. It was like, and, uh, tag two friends that you'd like to go on this trip. And obviously we didn't actually know much about how long the trip was going to be or many of the details really. It was just a weekend trip. I think they just remembered us, some of the colleagues that we'd worked with and notably Pim, our favourite. And um, yeah, he just said, would you like to come to Finland? We can organise this. And I was like, this is actually happening. It was very strange. So I had to, literally on the day, I booked the day off work. I think I had to book a couple of days off work because we left on like the Saturday and then we were coming back on the Tuesday or something like that. Or on the Monday, it was, oh, it was so touch and go. And my work was like, how have you just won a trip to Finland in the space of an hour, Adam? How have you done this? Now, bear in mind, like, obviously this was, this was right at this, this was the start towards the middle of March. And obviously lockdown restrictions, I think they came in literally the week after we got well, back. It was, it was while we were gone, they said, because they all came in on March the 8th, as far as I remember. So it was literally while we were gone, everyone was being told, right, the Monday everyone's back, everyone starts working from home soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I'll, I'll put up some pictures and stuff of the, of like our time there along with some like video footage and stuff. But like, it was the, the one thing that I remember, I don't know if this is the same for you, but I remember obviously the day that we left, we were in the airport and we got uh, like kind of like breakfast lunch there, didn't we? We stopped at a Wagamama's and I remember yeah. sitting in there watching people go through the airport with masks on and that seemed so surreal. Like it, it, looking back at it, it's crazy to think like all of that stuff, like what it eventually led to. But just yeah. like, I remember me and you, we were literally looking at people wearing masks and it just seemed weird. Like it seemed like it was an overreaction. Yeah, I think it's kind of an international space where some people were aware of it and we were kind of just not as made aware of it in the UK. I, I mean, I kind of, as soon as I saw everyone else with one, I was like, I want one now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and during the trip, to be fair, we had these big balaclavas anyway, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, it's uh, not like it, Yeah. I think it, it was timed very like it was close, but yeah. It was one of the last holidays that anyone could have had. Like, um Finland had only recorded like a, a real handful of cases, like tens of cases, and that was it. Um when we'd went there. And we were going to like the most remote part of Finland potentially ever, which was this town called Ruka. And it was like a ski resort as far as I remember. And 
yeah, they were just like, let's whack a 5G tower in to this like incredibly rural, almost in the Arctic Circle area of Finland. I remember when you were like over there, because obviously, obviously I don't really know what you were doing, you can get into that a bit more, but you weren't like on your phones or watching the news, you were like busy while you were there. And I remember I was watching the news and the cases over here were climbing and climbing. And my worry was that they weren't going to let you back in. It wasn't that like you would have got it from Finland, because I knew the cases were quite low in Finland, but we had higher cases than Finland. And I was like, oh, they could stop you from coming in. Like it was quite, it was quite scary. Like looking back on it now, especially, but like I remember having those kind of worries, and I remember when you um, when you left mine because obviously you had to get on the train. I remember I I joke saying, "Oh, are you gonna wear a mask?" Mm. And it was like it's just crazy looking it's back on so it. So crazy looking back at it. Aged like milk, that did. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I remember we were in the airport and to be fair, it was the best Wagamamas I'd ever had because they were doing like incredible breakfasts. And yeah, we got on the plane. It was like... It was all pretty normal, adventure. wasn't it? Got served some blueberry juice, which is probably like my favorite drink that I've still never had since. And they were giving that for free. It was free coffees, free teas, free blueberry juice. Um, and we just landed and it was just, it just like a wasteland at first. It was just like so much snow and you couldn't see anything. Yeah, we, we had a really good time there. Um, like, obviously it was such a short trip and there were like, even though we didn't get to do everything that, that OnePlus had hoped that we'd get to do just because it wasn't cold enough. I mean, <laughs> I'd never been to a snowy country before, but yeah, apparently it wasn't cold enough to, to do everything that they wanted to do. So that got delayed and we actually headed back before they'd finished doing all of the, the things that they wanted to do. So, I mean, when we got there, we were just chucked on this bus for a good while. I mean, we were trying to talk to people, but I mean, actually it was kind of good at getting to know some of the people um, from the OnePlus community. Because I mean, I've convinced loads of my friends to get the phones, but actually talking to people that now have the phone is kind of interesting. And we, we got into a couple of conversations of like what we might be doing, because we obviously only thought it was the robots, but little did we know, there was a lot of things that we were going to be doing that was very, very interesting over there. So as soon as we got there, um, we met up with everyone that we knew, some of our previous colleagues, and they were like, you want to jump in an ice lake? We're just going to have dinner, but uh, you can jump in this ice lake for about a few minutes, go in the sauna. It was just so like, welcome to Finland. We jump in the ice. I mean, it was it, it was lucky because we had, it was funny because we hadn't even discussed this before. Um, but as we as we headed down to just before we were going into the sauna, um, it, you said to me, uh, "You did you pack any swim shorts?" And I was like, "Yep." Yeah. Have you packed any swim shorts? And Adam was like, "Yep." Yeah. And then we were like, "We were so prepared." <laughs> Why on earth did we pack swim shorts for like going? Yeah, it was really like dumb. Any holiday, maybe that's quite a British thing, going to like almost the Arctic Circle, swim shorts. Um, yeah, we were in this sauna because apparently going into somewhere really warm to then go somewhere cold was like really clever. And oh god, jumping in was like the most cold experience. I've never been more cold. I think it was it was definitely in the minuses. I think it was sub zero and. It was just that sort of wave of adrenaline and panicking, trying to swim out as quick as possible. We've got a photo that I'm sure you're going to put up, and I look incredibly weak. I look feeble. We both do. We both look. We both look like children. <laughs> yeah, next to this like fully grown man. He's only like a few years older than us, but yeah, just yeah, very interesting. And then all of a sudden, jumped in an ice lake, and then everyone's like, right, dinner time. And we were just sat there eating dinner, reminiscing about yeah, one plus and things like that. Very, very peculiar. And I was very impressed because they had vegan options. They said, are you vegan? Uh, no, dietary requirements. And I actually said, yep, uh, vegan. And I was like, mm, I wonder how they're going to do this. And actually, the place was really, really good at catering. And it was like some of the nicest food that I've had because it was prepared properly and everything. Yeah, it was so, so good. Yeah, actually, like that, that first evening meal was so good. And oh, oh, I forgot to mention, we got the water bottles as well that were just lake water. They hadn't filtered it at all. They just said, this is lake water. And they just gave us these bottles, which was mad. Nicest water I've ever had. Can you can you remember what you what you ate on that first night? Uh, I remember it being a potato based dish. Ah, oh, there was a really nice red wine sauce as well that went with it. Um, we were having champagne and lots of wine, and it was very very nice. And then we went to where was it? Oh, to our hotel room. I mean, the, the one thing the one thing that annoyed me is I heard that other people in the hotel, they had saunas in their rooms and we didn't have a sauna in our room. And I was so annoyed. Right, even 
you, you've reminded me of something that I clearly like repressed and pushed away. Yes, other people got saunas, and that's like, ah. Oh. I mean, obviously, you know, this is all free, literally. Several hundred pound flight. This is an entirely free experience. Uh, just a random weekend somewhere else, but I had to play us like that. I mean, some people got a sauna, some people didn't. That's just how it was. So the next day, after we had a lovely night's sleep, I, I, don't, I th don't think it was too early in the morning, was it? Uh, I think we were both up just very naturally early because we were very excited, like on Christmas Day, little children. Um, so after we'd had breakfast and stuff, there wasn't too much of a rush, rush, because obviously they were trying to, they were trying to get everything still ready for for like the the marketing event, like the the stunt that they were doing. Um, but that wasn't ready yet, so basically they had some activities planned for for us to do, and one of them was uh, ri ice river floating. Yeah, they didn't. T this is the thing; they never told us what was going to happen. I think we got an itinerary like on the day or like right in the evening before, and it just. I had no idea what that meant. Was that just us just floating in some water? What could that mean? And I think we got more of an idea of it when we started suiting up for what we were doing. And it involved these boiler suits, which seemed, you know, pretty good for the cold weather. But then these incredibly watertight boiler suits that just seemed very intimidating. Then we were just cra This is the thing, they literally didn't tell us what we were doing. So we just then got just like sheeped herded into a minibus and they just drove us to a river. In the middle of nowhere. In the Literally of nowhere. off the side of a motorway, which wasn't really a motorway because you couldn't see the roads for anything. No, because it was all just snow. And so then we just, and again, they were not saying anything. So we just kept walking in these massive watertight boiler suits. And then the, our instru instructor, massive air quotes, he just seemed like an old man. Um, just like jumped into the lake backwards. He's like, there's what we're gonna do. And so, and then everyone just started doing it. So everyone just started going, hmm, let's just lie down as well and follow the man. Because I mean, we were lost otherwise. And it was actually quite nice. Yeah, I have to say like, it was, it's, it seems really weird. Like looking back at it, like obviously it's such a strange activity, but honestly, like it was so peaceful, like laying back and you could see, obviously everything was covered in snow and all you could see were like the tops of the, the snow covered trees and then just the sky. And it was so peaceful. It was, it was silent as well. Like just the sound of the water was the only thing. Incredibly serene because we had these big head floaties that were behind your heads. So you didn't get wet at all. It was just, and it wasn't as cold as you'd expect either. I guess that was probably the multiple layers we were wearing. But even with people talking, it just felt really nice. I didn't know any of these people, but it just felt really nice. We'll never get that again. Well, we could just go there again. We could just go there again. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Yeah, it just felt like a massive once in a lifetime experience, which was very strange. Meanwhile, I was at uni doing exams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, not everybody can uh, can have these wonderful escapades. But uh... I was going to say the best thing that probably happened after the ice floating was the drink we were given afterwards. I was literally saying this earlier to Megan. I've got a picture of you um, holding holding one of these yeah. drinks. I will never know the name that he called it. It was like magic mulled wine. It was so sweet. It was so nice. It didn't taste artificial at all. It was just these. Oh, we'll never have that again. Literally, we won't. He just said it was leftover from the Christmas party that they'd had. Oh, okay, and... so it was Christmas Eve. But it was like, finish Christmas. Oh, it was so good. One day. I'm going to find out. We're going to find out what that was. One day. I, I remember Googling in the um, minibus, <laughs> finish mulled drink and never being able to ascertain what it might be. When we got back, the idea was that we were going to play with some robots. The idea was there was this big field, and I'm sure we've got a good number of pictures of this, um, of these robots on massive um, tracks that could move around and fire snowballs at each other. But the problem was we were going to be running amongst them and being hit, and it was just too iced over. Well, no, it was two things, wasn't it? The original problem was they couldn't get snow into machines working very well because the snow was either not compacting properly, it was too dry and it was powder. And then the next day, they couldn't do it as well because it was too iced over and it meant we weren't allowed to run on the arena. So they were kind of, couldn't win, which is a bit of a disappointment. But um, 
Was it the next day that we did sledding, or the same day? I think it was. I think it was the same day because I seem to remember we were absolutely exhausted. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So because everything was being delayed and they didn't understand what was gonna really be happening with all the snow, they just opted for let's buy a load of sleds for everyone and go down the ski resort on sleds, which just didn't seem safe, but. It was just these giant hills. I mean, I'd sled it as a kid, but these were just pretty intense, like drops. And I will definitely send you a video in which I just get pelted with snow in my eyes flying down the hill. That was really fun. Yeah, I mean, it, it was funny because it was... It... <laughs> It wasn't just it wasn't just us and members of the OnePlus community that was there. There was also like a bunch of like influencers, influencers. like Europe. I think they were mostly European influencers, weren't they? Like some from like I think there were a few from like Scandinavia sort of region. Um, so they had a bunch of those there, and they were all busy filming their YouTube videos and stuff. And we were just like there uh, sledding in between them. It was it was really funny. Yeah, it was it was a very strange experience. It was incredibly fun, and also just watching the influencers. I mean, they were manufacturing a lot of content where they were kind of saying, oh, it'd be really cool if I crashed here. And I was like, hmm, it's not good. But um, no, it was just really fun and an amazing atmosphere. But I just kept feeling quite guilty that they'd spent so much money on this um, event and brought so many influences in. And then the media the next day for them to go, ain't working. Was it that same evening that we then got taken to the... Uh... Yes. Yeah, so go on, do you want to talk about that? Again, without knowing much, we were just told we're going to have a dinner somewhere. And I was expecting the same place that we'd had dinner the night before. Um, but again, we were chucked on mini bu in a minibus, driven somewhere. And then we were just waiting in the middle of nowhere, a group of like 15 of us and then one or two chaperones who still didn't really know what was going on. For what can I describe as these snow sleds, these giant um, petrol powered things with like a huge trailer on the back where people could sit. We just obviously got onto those, drove about for about 15 minutes. And then it was actually really sweet and adorable what they did. They'd put together a little chalet house in the middle of nowhere in which they'd put a little OnePlus logo above everything. And they had a, a few little hors d'oeuvres, a little amuse-bouche and a few drinks. It was actually really cool. Now, I have to, I think out of the whole experience, I think that bit was the best because that's when we really got to like sit down and talk to the people like that were from the community and we got to chat to, got to chat to the, the OnePlus colleagues and stuff and people that we hadn't met before and they had a DJ there, they had like fires lit oh, yeah. and yeah, it was just like a really nice atmosphere. What did you, what did you eat while you were there? There was different <laughs> options of food. I... <laughs> I felt a little bit bit guilty, but I thought this is a sort of once in a lifetime chance. So yeah. I had I had a little roll, a little reindeer roll. I don't know what else it was called, but it was like a little reindeer roll. And uh, you know what? It was okay, but I, I would I wouldn't rush back to have it. It was the food was nice there. The other food as well. The best thing was those little uh, iced buns. But it was really really nice. We got talking to some really nice Finnish people as well that had been in the military, and you kind of learn. A lot about we learned quite a lot about Finland from just talking to those two people. It's kind of interesting. You have to do military service for several years, and university is very, very different over there compared to here. So it's very weird. Adam, have you got any Finnish facts? Uh, did you know the national animal of Finland is the Wapa goose? I did not know that. What's a Wapa goose? Uh, just a big goose, I know. <laughs> I can't. Um, another, I think I got all these facts on the way home, and I got a really good picture of a load of them. There's more saunas than people in Finland. No, that can't be true. I that think I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you've said that to me. I'm sure you said that to me while we were out there. Who's building this? So there is usually more than one sauna in a house, and as a result, o over the average, there are more saunas than homes in Finland. Definitely. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as a nation, per person, they drink the most coffee, which I really wouldn't have thought. I mean, you know, the US is like known for having like coffee, but um, yeah, they drink the most coffee as a nation per person, which is kind of interesting. That was the evening of the, the night before that we left, wasn't it? Yeah, they were trying to work out how to get us home because um, a variety of flights were being cancelled and delayed because of COVID, like right at the start, this was everything happening. 
and we ended up going home a little bit earlier but realistically i wasn't that bothered about it because the next day's activities were being pulled along by reindeers and i think that was the main thing that we were missing out on and i don't know about you but i would have felt really guilty um being pulled along by something that loads of other people have been eating that day <laughs> <laughs> only the day before yeah i don't think we missed out on too much that day i mean yeah. again they were trying to get they were trying to get these robots working but they i, I think they were st still struggling to do it by that point so yeah, we, we headed home, I think a bit earlier than most people, um, and we headed back to Heathrow Airport, just as things were starting to lock down. Yeah, mad. But we did get a go on the robots in the end. Yeah, we did. Because the whole point was actually, it was to demonstrate the internet capabilities of the phone, and you could log in, and you could go on a phone by remote, and I, we've definitely got footage of this, like screen recordings, in which you get to control this robot that is miles and miles and miles away, in real time and fire some robot uh, fire some snowballs at each other which was kind of fun yeah that, that was very fun that was, that was really cool well thank you for joining us today adam uh for You're a little officially our first guest thank you very much more content coming soon ooh, i hope ooh, you guys. a tease a tease um yeah thank you for the trip down memory lane uh we'll probably have to do this again sometime Absolutely. Solid Egg 2. That's what I want to see. Solid Egg number 2. <laughs> we can make that happen. Vegan Egg. Vegan yeah, Solid Egg. Yeah, do a vegan one. Oh, God. Adam, have you got anything that you need to plug right, right at the uh, end here? I'd say I'm most proud of the uh, radio show that I hosted with two of my friends that you featured in a couple of times, actually. I did. I'm pretty sure there's an episode where you and Megan are both uh, in one of the episodes, so maybe link that as well if you can. Well, I will leave a link to that and also go and give Adam a sub subscribe for some support. Uh, thank you everybody for watching if you have enjoyed this uh, or if you've just enjoyed Adam, then please do give this video a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos, maybe featuring Adam, who knows. Uh, we will stick uh, a video uh, down there, maybe check out our Get To Know Us part two where I talk a little bit about uh, how we got to know OnePlus and uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next one. Uh, say bye, Adam. Bye, Adam. Bye, Adam. Bye, bye. Adam. Bye. Let's let's get going. Well, wait. Where did we go? What happened?